Hey guys, Sage here with Dirt Time Adventures, and we're going to be looking at part two of the third principle of the six principles of survival, which is to maintain core body temperature. I really couldn't put shelter and fire in the same video segment. There just was really way too much, um, you know, uh, fundamentals and concepts that goes into them to have them in the same video. So I broke them up into two parts. So if you missed that one, be sure to go back and watch it, and then uh, you can catch this one or vice versa, finish this one and go back and watch the other one. But today we're going to be looking at fire and understanding the science behind fire and the principles of it. And I'm going to be using the acronym FLAME, which stands for the uh, fundamentals, the location, adjustment, maintenance, and extinguishing. So be sure to stick with me as we get ready to break down fire and looking at each of the different concepts. So the F is, once again, stands for the fundamentals or foundation of fire, understanding the building blocks of what fire is. And when you can begin to understand that fire is not necessarily a thing or an object, but that it's, a, it's an event, it's something that takes place whenever these certain elements are combined, um, what we call the fire triangle, which is made up of fuel, oxygen, and heat. And so if you just imagine, it's called the tetrahedron or tetrahedron or triangle for us simple folks. Um, it, it's got three sides, oxygen, fuel, and then heat. And those, when they are combined properly, will make up fire. Um, and so whenever you are struggling to make fire, and especially for people who have not built a whole lot of fires, it's easier to, to look at someone and criticize them or condemn them and be like, oh, they don't know what they're doing. I could have that fire going in no time. Until you've built a bunch of fires, you cannot have any say so whatsoever because fire is not something as simple as turning on a light switch. It requires some skill and some understanding. Um, one of the biggest mistakes people make though when it comes to fire is they don't have a proper platform in place So they start their fire on a wet or moist ground and then the other things is they either smother it Or they try to use way too big of material. I like to use the acronym the king fire Once you have your platform in place you need TKF the king fire you need tinder kindling and fuel so my tender is going to be the tiny fibrous particles. Um, everything from cedar barks to different wood shavings and uh, just uh, different dried grasses and mosses. Uh, there's various different types of tenders out there. The biggest thing is that you break it down to the finest fibers. The more fibrous it is, the more follicles that are going to be able to catch the sparks from your ferro rod or to be able to ignite from the heat of your coal. Your kindling is going to be everything that is pencil lead size um, to no thicker than pencil size. If you start getting any bigger than pencil size, you're moving more into your fuel bases. So it's best to start off with a softball size of tinder. You want a good couple large handfuls of kindling and then your fuel is going to be anything that's made up of thumb size and bigger. And it's important no matter whether it's your kindling, your tender, or your fuel, make sure that it has a good snap. Everything needs to snap. If it don't snap, it ain't dead. So, one of my favorite absolute tenders is cedar bark. Um, we teach it regularly. It's important that you don't over harvest the cedar bark from the tree or you risk injuring it and causing it to die. But simply find you a tree that's got some bark that's some, somewhat starting to remove from itself and use the back of your blade and begin scraping it off. It's gonna provide you a nice layer of tinder. All these fine hairs here now are gonna be highly combustible. So if you can find you a dead cedar, then you don't even have to worry about it. You can harvest it or if it's alive, just be sure to stop when you start getting into any type of white or red wood. But I can pretty much go and scrape all the bark off this all the way around to get me a good tinder bundle. And in no time, I could have 
a good softball size. So another one of my absolute favorite fire starting methods is using fatwood. Uh, if you're not familiar with fatwood, we definitely have some other videos online on our YouTube channel to be checking out fatwood. But uh, essentially all it is is impregnated wood that uh, comes from the pine trees. When they die, all the resins seep down into the trunk and collect and create this translucent stick of fatwood here. And all I gotta do is, using the Sigmora here, I can use the back end of the scraper on it and scrape in some piles of tinder. This scraper puts out excellent scrapings of fatwood. If you don't have a scraper on your knife, you can use the back side of your knife to get some scrapings as well. And the beautiful thing that I see a lot of people will light the whole stick, and it's really a waste. You don't really need that much fat wood. You just need you a little bit of a pile of shavings, so. Another thing you can do with the fat wood, if you are wanting to use the whole stick, which I don't recommend, is to make some feather sticks. Just make you some thin cuts in it, trying to make you some curls. Get you, get you a better light of that. Get you some curls and feather stick it. Or once you do that, if you're not wanting to use the whole stick, then I can just cut that off into my pile. Scrape all the rest off the table. And once again, you're gonna be starting your fire on a platform. I cannot emphasize a platform enough. It needs to be dry. And once again, just like in shelters, the heat loss transference mechanism of conduction will suck the heat from your fire. And if you wanna learn more about the conduction, be sure and go back and watch the shelter video. But from here, I can use something as simple as a ferro rod. And that's what I want to talk about now. I am a huge fan of bow drill, but as far as energy expenditure goes, I cannot go wrong with a ferro rod. Uh, and a lot of times when I'm out in the bush, if I'm not trying to practice my skills, nine times out of 10, I'm going to use this, the good old Bic. Bic will light pretty much anything. If you got a flame and you got something that'll take a flame, this is another beauty of fatwood. It will burn and burn and burn like a candle um, due to those resins. Um, but a sparrow rod is usually more likely to last you a lot longer than a big lighter will. But don't get me wrong, this sucker has lasted me a long time. Um, so if you have to, use a lighter or ferro rod. But uh, when you go out into the wild or out into the bush, even if it's to practice your skills, do not, listen to me, do not go out there without some form of combustion device. I don't care how skilled you are at bow drill. Um, the reality is, is the paradox of fire. That's the reality. The paradox of fire is what I call it. And the paradox of fire says that the more you need fire, the harder it is to obtain. And so no matter how you know tough you think you are, do not go out there without adequate tender material and fire starter. So once you get your tender bundle, whether it be fat wood or uh, cedar shavings, the biggest thing, once again, breaking it down into fine particles. Another mistake that I see oftentimes when it comes to the ferro rod is the technique. A lot of people will try to flail off their hands and so you should never do that when using a ferro rod. You either need to pull back on the ferro rod or plant the ferro rod and slide the, the ferro rod down. So let me demonstrate. So either pull or plant it and push down into it. And guys, I'm telling you, it is all in what I call technique. You probably can't see me from the black smoke from the resin. 
But I see guys on there who scrape their ferro rods 50 million times and end up with a toothpick when if they just would have had proper technique, they could save their ferro rod and then build an effective fire. And guys, I can't emphasize it enough. Fire is vital. It will treat your wounds so it's good for medical uses. It, you can cauterize, you can sterilize with it. It can treat your water so it's effective for water procurement. You gotta also remember that it's going to be a conductor of heat. So it's gonna be excellent for maintaining your core body temperature. It's going to be able to allow you to cook your food. And then like we discussed in this first principle, it's gonna provide you a form of security. So make sure if you had to be proficient at one skill, make sure it is fire. So I'm taking my tinder bundle, breaking it down to the finest fibers I can get. I have my platform in here that's gonna be dry so I can transfer it so that no moisture is gonna suck out the heat. And then I have my fire lay built up, which I use a TP or what I like to call a beautiful mess. <laughs> it uh, usually doesn't look like a TP by the time I get it built, but it's an aerated structure. That's what you gotta understand is aerated, which there's tons of pockets for oxygen. And then I create a little pocket here in the middle for the, uh, the tender bundle to go into. So we'll light it up, stick it in there, and have, we'll have fire. This time, instead of planting and pushing, I'm going to pull back on my ferro rod to light it. So you can plant and push or pull back on your ferro rod. See if we can get it in one shot. Biggest thing is make sure that it is fluffed up. One shot, let's see if we can nail it. One shot, that's all I got. This material is still pretty damp, so I'm kind of nervous about it. Let it breathe if you're having a hard time getting it to breathe. Start blowing into it. You can do a diamond blowing method. Gonna let that burn just for a second. See if we can aerate it out a little bit. As long as it's still smoking. As long as it's still smoking, you still have hope. Right now I got a little bit of a damp tinder in that tinder bundle. I told you to make sure you use a uh, a uh, Make sure you use a softball size because if you need to add some more, you can. So it's summertime and 93 degrees outside. So I don't know why the heck I have a fire. I definitely don't need to worry about maintaining core body temperature now, but I really wanted to take this opportunity just to, to share with you, you know, a little more insight, in-depth look into fire. So we talked a lot about the foundation of fundamentals, understanding the fire triangle and the king fire principle, and then the paradox of fire, the, heart, the greater the need, the more difficult it is to obtain. But Let's continue to look at flame from the acronym FLAME. The L stands for location. Just like shelter location, your fire location is just as important. Make sure you clear out a proper fire ring of at least five foot or on each side, so a 10 foot circumference. You wanna make sure you line your fire with rocks. Make sure they're not wet rocks so that you do not have exploding rocks. Um, and then also just make sure you're not in a flood zone. It would be extremely disappointing to work so hard to build a fire all to have it washed out from flooding or rain runoff. Um, so location is important. The A stands for adjust. And the simple fact is you just always need to be adjusting your fire to maintain the key elements of fire. Heat, fuel, and oxygen. If the fire seems to be going out but you have plenty of fuel on the fire, then you need to adjust it to open up the, the fire 
um, formation to allow more oxygen to come in. Um, that could be everything from making a fire poker and spreading it and stirring it, creating air pockets for oxygen to get in, or removing some fuel so that it's not being smothered, uh, or adjusting the size of the fuel. And so there's all kinds of things you can do to adjust your fire. The M stands for maintain. This is where you're constantly adding and in, in, in increasing the amount of fuel you put on the fire based on the amount of flames. Your wood should never stack above your flame. That's a key principle to understand. Never add more wood until your flames are up above the fire. Um, also with that, never break and cut firewood if you don't have to. Uh, it's best to try to burn it if you can. Whew. Tell you what guys, I'm thinking cooking like a snowman on the 4th of July. Oh. Whew. Sorry about that. And so, uh, M is maintaining, always maintaining it, and then always properly extinguish your fire. Uh, I know we have a real bad habit of letting it burn on into the night as we are camping around it, hanging around it, but if you are not gonna be in the vicinity of that fire, you must extinguish that fire. Make sure that it is cool to the touch when you put your hand over that fire. Um, so flame, fundamentals, location, adjustment, maintenance, um, and then extinguish. So I think the fire's about burned out and I'm ready to call it a day. So I'm gonna put this bad boy out and get ready to uh, put out another video. So once again, guys, so grateful for you guys tuning in. We're gonna have uh, the fourth principle coming up real soon. So be sure to stay tuned. And as always, we encourage you guys to be sure to share, subscribe, and uh, get out there and spread the word. We'd love to have you at one of our classes. So check us out online at survivalschool.us.